introspection. As a journalism major at the University of Kansas, we were taught to dissect words, taught to pay attention to words, how they form sentence structures and how they ultimately became greater as a sum of their parts. So when we think about introspection, we really think about the word intro. Now, like many of you, I can't imagine starting much of anything during this year of 2020, more like just trying to get to 2021. Between the pandemic that has ravaged our communities, especially the most vulnerable amongst us, as well as the social unrest and social injustice of the killing of George Floyd and others, most of us just feel like we're just trying to make sure that we get through. Most of us also realize that we see less of resolve and unity in our country, but rather we see the character of our country. And many of us don't like what we see, but how just like how words without letters cannot exist, without our own introspection, we cannot identify how we can use our talents to change our circumstance and improve the lives of those around us. My own journey of introspection began two years ago. For 10 years, I had the pleasure of working for the University of Kansas Endowment Association, one of the, if not the best, public higher education endowments in the country. I loved going to work every day. I loved my colleagues and I loved strengthening my alma mater. With a loving wife and a newborn baby, I was happy and comfortable. But there was a restlessness in me. I almost felt too comfortable. I didn't know where this was coming from, other than to say there was an echo that kept reverberating within me, and no matter how hard I tried, I just could not find the origin. Now, before I move on, uh, it would be beneficial for you to know a little bit about my own journey, and because this is a KU event, I have to share this photo, because if you Google who I am, this is probably going to come up, and you're going to ask about it later. This was taken for the media guide prior to my senior football season. At the time, I had completed my undergraduate studies graduated and enrolled in my master's program because I thought, hey, I'm on full scholarship. I might as well get another degree while I'm here. What a privilege. Now, despite this scowl on my face, as a division one student athlete, I really didn't have anything to worry about, especially at a place like KU. I wanted for nothing. Even in high school, it was a foregone conclusion that I was gonna to go to college, even if being a student athlete wasn't my plan. Now that you've accepted that the person in the photo and I are the same, let's get back to the story. Over the last 10 years, a friend and mentor of mine, Myra Geary, has been a wonderful, wonderful peer. Before joining the Hall Family Foundation, where she eventually became president, she was the executive director of the Hispanic Development Fund. When she first brought up the executive director role, my first response was I didn't know anybody that was going to be a good fit, much less myself. I reasoned that I'm not a Kansas City native, not an HDF alumni, and most importantly, I didn't feel I had that lived experience to know what our Latin community really needed. Her nice conversations would wax and wane, but Myra persisted, and I'm grateful that she did. As a former executive director of HDF herself, she had a keen sense on how HDF could grow and strengthen its mission to lift up our community even more so than it already had. And over the course of those conversations, I began contemplating the plight of my own family and her Hispanic heritage. My grandfather, Lorenzo Orozco, moved his young family from the small farming community of Brenham, Texas, to Austin, home of the University of Texas. Even though he didn't finish high school, my grandmother only attended school through seventh grade. He knew, just absolutely knew in his heart of hearts that if his children could grow up rooting for the Longhorns, as well as physically seeing this great institution of higher learning, then they would be that much closer to elevating themselves through education. So eight people lived in a 1,200 square foot, three bedroom, one bath house, just a few miles from the UT campus. And I would later learn strategically placed near a stop on the UT bus route. Now, what makes a father and mother do this? Well, the simple answer is love. What makes them chrome bunk for 23 years in the case of my grandfather or work in a basement of a hospital washing bed lemons as my grandmother did for most of her adult life to help pay for her students' college, for kids' college? But if we look deeper, it's more than love. We know that my grandparents' story is just one of many that are told every day, even here in Kansas City. Growing up, there were three values that were instilled upon me by my grandparents that were undoubtedly passed on from them. These were faith, family, and education. I, need these, I know these values are shared amongst my many Latino brothers and sisters here in Kansas City. And that is what Myra helped me realize, that this role would be less of a stretch, but more as a confirmation of the values that are already intrinsic to me. So I accepted the role. And the past year has been one of the most exhilarating, challenging, and fulfilling of my life. One of the first things I did as executive director was to establish a scholarship in both of my grandparents' names through the HDF Name Scholarship Program. The HDF Name Scholarship Program has been an incredible way for our families to honor that legacy of education from generation to generation. Now, let me tell you about a young man named Danny. 
When Danny Rett graduated high school, he would tell you he wanted to go to college, but was unsure about the pathway there. Like many potential first-generation college students, he was unsure about the cost as well as the process, how to make the right choice about even where to be. Now, on top of this, Danny is also undocumented. So he was not eligible for federal financial aid, such as applying for FAFSA, Pell Grants, or federal work study. And because many private scholarships require the for a FAFSA as a form of income, he did not qualify for any scholarships that assistant classmates applied for and received. So upon graduating high school, he went to work with his father as a landscaper. During those long, hard hours and hot days, he would go to work, sometimes on the homes of his former classmates, and thought about what could have been. Last winter, when the landscaping season ended, Danny went to work as a waiter. But when COVID-19 hit in March, he lost his job. At that moment, Danny's life could have gone in a million different directions, but he felt that pull, perhaps the same one that I felt, that he had the potential to do more. He wanted to give college a fair shot, but he still didn't have the first clue about how to go there. And searching for the best colleges here in Kansas City for undocumented students, he discovered Donnelly College in Kansas City, Kansas. However, the other major factor still existed. He didn't have the money, and without a job or the ability to get scholarship dollars, he had limited options. But Danny did have a car, and though he loved the freedom it provided, he knew it was his ticket to college. So he cleaned that car up and promptly sold it, because in his words, I knew that at least it would pay for a semester of college at Donnelly, and I would figure it out from there. He had faith it would work out. I met Danny as a Donnelly student. He participated in our annual fundraising campaign, Cambio para Cambio, which raises funds for our HDF scholarship program. Because our HDF scholarships are open to all students, regardless of immigration status, Danny wanted to help those that were coming behind him, though, even though himself was not an HDF scholar. Not yet, at least. When I heard Danny's story, I immediately knew that he would be the first recipient of my grandparents' scholarship. Upon telling him the news, he cried. He said he never would have thought he would have been able to get a scholarship, and because Donnelly matches our HDF scholarship, he was well on his way to paying for his second semester. His faith was rewarded. But while we rejoice in Danny's perseverance, we know there are others that have desired to attend college but slipped through the cracks. While the Hispanic Development Fund has done an enormous amount of good for our community over the last 35 years with almost $7 million in scholarship dollars provided and over $3 million in grants, our wonderful HDF board also did some introspection. Now, it would have been incredibly easy to continue to grow the scholarship program, which plays a huge role in providing access to our community. But our board knew HDF could do more. So while we were celebrating our 35th anniversary last year, concurrently, we were also planning for the next 35 years. As an organization, we also got uncomfortable to ask ourselves what else we could be doing. The answer lies in the fact that here in Kansas City, there exists a 17-point college attainment gap for our Latino students. So HDF decided to not only focus on access, but readiness. With the support of the h &R Block Foundation, the HDF Family College Prep Program was born. The programming aims to close the college attainment gap by leveraging our existing partnerships and serving as a convener between our secondary and post-secondary partners. The core of this program, the core of this program is to provide culturally relevant information to our students and their families. This program is all about providing context because no, navigating a complex college process is hard enough, but even if you are first-generation student, of which 80% are HDF scholars are. And the true efficacy of this program is that while we work with predominantly Latino high schools, this program is available to the entirety of the senior class of the schools we work with because we know that the disadvantages our Hispanic students face are the same socioeconomic barriers that their non-Hispanic classmates do. This program is currently in four high schools, Bishop Ward High School, Guadalupe Centers High School, Lincoln Prep, and East High School. The data from the pilot year showed increases in college acceptance rates, number of scholarships received, ACT scores, and greater family involvement. Our plan is to increase our partner schools in the upcoming year with the aim of creating systemic change in how our students and their families approach the college going process. So like individual introspection, it's critical that we ask our organizations and institutions to look within ourselves to find the equity that implements change. Now, I'd like to close my remarks with a brief story that affirmed my decision is where HDF I needed to be. I kind of glossed over that part. It was ultimately the, the big decision. My wife, Emily, and I have welcomed our first child last January. And as many new parents know, there are many moments where you're just kind of sleepwalking and trying to get through the day with eyes glazed over. It was in one of those moments that a sense of clarity prevailed. On a visit to my parents' home, I was sitting in their study, unsuccessfully attempting to coax our daughter Ophelia to sleep, when I noticed a book about Ceso Chavez. My mother was a history teacher for 23 years, and growing up, our house was always filled with books on the exploits of many historical leaders, especially those that would predominantly, that would inspire 
for predominantly Latino students. So balancing Ophelia in one arm, I picked it up and turned it over. Sometimes life provides these moments that when you think about them and look back on them, they seem too serendipitous to be true. But on the back of that book was a quote by Cesar Chavez, and it read, we cannot seek achievement for ourselves and forget about the progress and prosperity for our community. Our ambitions must be broad enough to include the aspirations and needs of others for their sake and for our own. Now imagine reading that quote while holding your child and deciding on the opportunity to lead an organization like this Hispanic Development Fund. Thank you for joining me this evening. I hope your own journeys of introspection lead to more than just reflection, it, that it leads to action because the power to change lies within. We need you. Good night.